Hey guys, Jules Effect here. Just be before the tutorial officially begins, I would just like to tell you guys that I apologize for my French accent. I also do apologize if you think that the fire does not look realistic enough. Uh, I tried to make the best that I could. Uh, I really like the lighting of the fire though. Um, and if you have any advice on how to make it better, just post them in the comment section below. And I hope you have a good time watching this tutorial. Welcome to part three of this video tutorial to show you how to make torches in Cinema 4D. Uh, in the part one, we took a look on how to model the torch and texture it um, using splines. So we modeled a torch that looks like this. In part two, we took a look, an in-depth look on how to uh, make the lighting for our scene. Uh, so we ended up with lighting that looks pretty much like this. Now I know that the lighting doesn't uh, render great because of Cam Studio. That's why I put in the bottom right corner over here, a preview video of what it really looks like. Um, and I just added a sky to the scene to make it m look more um, appealing while I render. So that's pretty much it. So uh, in this part, in part three, we are going to take a look on how to create the fire and the smoke uh, using uh, pyro clusters and such. So uh, first thing is first, we are going to go over here into the mat material it, and we are going to select shader and uh, select pyro cluster and we are going to create another shader a vol volume tracer so we are going to take that pyro cluster volume tracer and we are going to put it on the environment that we created earlier to put an environment into the scene you come over here and select environment so it's pretty easy to do now that we have that we are going to add an emitter to the scene and if we bring if we if we bring that emitter way up, uh, the emitter is going to emit uh, into the the blue direction. I believe blue is uh, is the Z direction, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, blue is Z. So we are going to rotate it 90, 90 degrees into the Z direction. So that's the H. Like this. Sorry, I selected. The wrong thing. All right, here we go. 90 degrees as such. That was not its P. All right, that should do it. And as you can see, our emitter is now facing up. We are going to put it, we are going to go into our top view over here by pressing the middle mouse button. We are going to center it in the center of our scene. We could also do that by entering uh, the coordinates over here for zero zero and now what we are going to do is that we are going to bring it slightly inside the torch as such and we are going to make it bigger so we are going to come into emit over here we are going to select a uh, pyramid <sighs> we are going to I'm sorry um, okay, we are going to modify the X and Y size of the emitter until it's, it's big enough, pretty much like this and pretty much like this. I think that looks good. We're going to go back into our view over here. That looks great. So we have our emitter over here. And now if we press play, we can see it is emitting particles, but this isn't sufficient at all. So what we are going to do over here, let me just check how much time has passed. We are now at file size. All right. Um, okay, our emitter over here, we want it to produce more particles, 500 should suffice now if we hit play these particles are way too slow uh, we are going to, to put an emission at like uh, 99,000 or something like that because we wanted to emit all the time um, what the hell just happened okay I think he doesn't like uh, 
doesn't like that value over here we'll just put 90 for the moment um, but you, you really need to match these values for your scene uh, lifetime uh, we'll leave that up for the moment we're just going to modify the speed so that our particles go fast enough we need them to go even faster than that so let's play put play over here uh, is this fast enough I'm not sure we'll see to that later that should suffice for now we are also going to put some variation over there um, about 35 percent variation for every um, every one of these we are going to put some rotation as well and scale uh, a little bit higher with some variation um, no the end scale actually will be smaller with some variation we are going to put some lifetime 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 is way too long we are going uh, to put that to let's say 50 50 and now we are going to see where our particles stop that looks pretty good so as you can see here we have a flow of particles which sort of looks like um, fire a little bit now if we take that power cluster that we created earlier and that we put it onto the emitter over here when we when we render we should see all of those wonderful particles that take way too long to render over here um, all right so that's that um, so we have we sort of have our fire but that is that doesn't look like fire at all and what we are going to do to fix that is that we are going to uh, change the this power cluster over here but before we do that we are going to come over here in the volume tracer and uh, we are going to where is that I, I want to um to make it render faster i'm sure some of you guys already know where i have to go but i can't find it anyways we are going to leave that for now um i'm I'm sorry, I, I, I have to cut this short, uh, but we'll, we'll do a part 4 for this video. In part 4, uh, we will see how to configure all of these to get uh, realistic flames. Uh, so uh, we added power cluster uh, to an environment and emitters. Uh, we added um, power clusters to them to make uh, that kind of um, uh, dust look, but in the other tutorial we are going to see how to make this look like flames so that our torch looks amazing and we are also going to add some turbulence in there so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh be sure to check out part three uh part four to uh to see the end thanks for watching and have a nice day